Mrs. Lerby has come to take her husband to his final rest. Our condolences. Oh, jeez. He's heavier now than when he was alive. Has Madame selected a place for dispersal? Well, he was the king of double knit. So I think I'll just spread him over one of his stores. Uh, I think that Mrs. Lerby is pulling our leg. The ashes are going to be dispersed over the ocean by our helicopter at 8 o'clock tonight. A uh, cremation, that might be the way to go. There's no worms, but that's hot, right? Well, let me show you the procedure, please. Oh, thank you. After you. Yes, I'm, I'm leaving now, but I'll be back in good time for the service. You're very fine, thank you. Why, this place is scary. We would uh, wheel you in on a gurney, just like this one. Then if I had to store you overnight, we'd put you in here. It's refrigerated. Uh, is that thing always locked? Well, if a body is stored overnight, it is locked up. We wouldn't want it to run away on us. I know, sir. Uh, do uh, all the employees have keys? Uh, ju just me. Good afternoon, Lieutenant. Welcome to my parlor. The Lieutenant is interested in the cremation procedure. Is he? Uh, General, I'm not too happy with the flower arrangement in the chapel. You have an eye for that sort of thing. Would you check it out for me, please? I'll take over here. Right away, sir. Pleasure meeting you, Lieutenant. I'll, I'll give you the tour. Here we have um, an injector tube for blood and uh, formaldehyde. And here we have, uh, we have scalpels, uh, needles and thread, uh, putty, pancake, makeup, powder. A mortician not only has to be a surgeon, but also part beautician and part uh, makeup artist. Now, this thing is called a trocar. You can take it, it's been sterilized. Uh, we um, insert that into you, attach the tube to extract your combustible gases. It must be a funny job, sir. Being a mortician. It has its moments. But that is an indispensable piece of equipment. I don't know what I'd do without it. So you undress the body, then you do whatever you have to do with that stuff there, dress it again, and then what? In the box, in the coffin, in the casket. Like that one there, sir? Oh, it's a very popular model. Could two people fit in there? I'm afraid not. What do you have in mind? Oh, it's a crazy thought, sir. You know, the wife and I, we do everything together. Nah. Forget it. Where's the oven? The oven? Here's our little oven. What we do is up with the door. In you pop, turn on the heat, and uh, away you go. What heat would that be, sir? 1,600 degrees. And my wife doesn't even like sunburn. And when it's finished, everything gone? All gone. And one person can run the oven? Yes. A whole body can fit into one of those? Well, a human being is mostly water, and a man of your size would probably uh, burn down to about uh, five pounds. <laughs> oh, I forgot so. Yes, uh, the, the Van Riley, uh, Van Riley. Ceremony. These are his uh, dancing shoes. Uh, they'll be uh, buried with him. Would you care to see? Uh, yes, I would, sir. Yeah. <coughs> Everything would burn in that oven. Of course, there are exceptions. Uh, some things you can't cremate. Uh, pacemakers, for instance. They're, they're made of titanium. Uh, Mr. Houston, he didn't have one of those, did he? A pacemaker? No. That's much better, Gerald. Uh, uh, you and Hugo can go now, but do remember, check everything well before the service, won't you? It shall be done, sir. Thank you, thank you, Hugo. Now, after the service, these are placed in the casket before the casket is closed. Ah, uh, sir, in case you were wondering, Miss uh, Chandler, she didn't wear a pacemaker. No, I, I wasn't wondering. Yeah, but she did have one of these. Uh, this is a, uh, a pager. She had this model, sir, or she carried this with her everywhere, probably in her pocket, and this would tell her when she received email messages from the computer. And you know, on the day she disappeared, she received messages all over, let's see, 11.13 and 11.57. But then, at 12.32, the page had cut off. No more signals, kaput. So what do you think caused that? Oh, oh. Ah, that is a burning question, sir. I think she was dead. Really? 
Yeah, I think she was killed right here at the Houston service. But what would the killer do with the body? Ah, uh, he would get rid of it. He cremated it. But there was only one cremation that day. That was Chuck Houston's, and I did it. Yeah, so the killer would have had to have switched the body, switched Chuck Houston with Miss Chandler. Ah, I see. So if he had switched the bodies, that would explain how the pager went kaput. Ah, uh, yes, sir. It would. Yes, I see. Well, since there was only one cremation that day and I performed it, that would make me the murderer. Do tell me, uh, do, you, uh, do you have any bodies? Uh, no, sir, I don't. Uh, so if you don't have any bodies, you can't prove that there was a switch? Uh, no, sir, I can't. Uh, no bodies, no case? Mm -hmm. I suppose so. Yeah, well, that's the tricky thing about burning questions. Once they're burned, they're just ashes. Ashes, have you gone? Just one more thing.